Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's October the 16th, 2020. Let's talk a football play, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I'd like to focus on the NFC East right now. Um, somebody is going to win that division, as we've said in earlier videos. Now, Pro Football Focus, an excellent site, has a recommended play. They think that the Dallas Cowboys, at a minus 125, are the play to win the division. Again, Dallas at a minus 125. Now, I believe a lot of retail gamblers might take that play. The purpose of this video is to encourage you to do something different, right? Understand, I believe we know it's not the Giants' year. It's not the Washington football team's year, right? The Giants, of course, have lost Saquon Barkley. Washington is in complete flux. Haskins is out as quarterback. Alex Smith is in now, but you can tell he's rusty. You could also tell that the offensive line cannot protect him. So it's a 50-50 shot on who wins the division. And you know, whether it's Philly or Dallas, whoever wins that division will make the playoffs. That's just how the math works. Division winners, as good as they are or as bad as they are, make the playoffs. So why would you fool around with less than even money odds here? When you can take a swing at huge odds, huge, knowing that one of these two teams is going to make the playoffs and is going to be in play and that you could always hedge the play later and get much more than a minus 125 in expected winnings right now. So, the Dallas Cowboys. Look, I don't expect them to win the Super Bowl. But all we're trying to do is to get leverage here, maximize our winnings. So Dallas right now is going off at 40 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Philadelphia. Look, I don't expect Philly to win the Super Bowl. I know they're badly injured. Who knows whether Carson Wentz is going to make it through the entire year healthy. But you understand, they're one of only two teams with a shot to make the playoffs, and you understand. If they make the playoffs, you're already in the green, because then you can start betting on whoever they're playing against. When they lose in the playoffs you will have collected more than the odds they're offering you right now for Philly to win the NFC East. So Philly for the season, right now, October the 16th, 2020, is going off at 45 to 1. So my point to you is, don't waste your time getting things like a minus 125 uh, return on a division prop. When you could bet both teams at 40 to 1 and up odds. Again, 40 to 1 and up odds. And then, of course, come playoff time, you could throw money on whoever is playing against them, knowing that you have a lot of leverage to play with. Right? A lot of leverage to play with. And you could make back your money to a far greater degree than you can betting the who wins the division prop. Right? Think it through. Um, let's give a concrete example here. If I bet $1 on the Dallas Cowboys to win it all, and I bet $1 on the Philadelphia Eagles to win it all, then I'm out $2. Now, if one of those two teams, and this is really the real bet, if one of those two teams wins the NFC East, then they're in the playoffs, folks. 
So let's say, by then, Seattle is a juggernaut. Or let's say Green Bay is a juggernaut. Or Tom Brady has the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a juggernaut. And let's say the winner of the NFC East, whether it's the Cowboys or whether it's the Eagles, has to play Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. And let's say you're not confident in beating Aaron Rodgers. Well, understand, at that point, you're out two bucks. Let's say Rodgers is favored big. At that point, you could throw 20 bucks. 20 on Aaron Rodgers to beat the winner of the NFC East on a money line. Let's say that money line is going off at, you know, five to one odds. So you would make four bucks, right? Well, just understand, that's a nice rate of return. Let's say you decide to play it even differently. Well, at that point, given the leverage you're working with, you could even deal with a point spread line or a teaser where you tease down the margin, something reasonable, and get a good rate of return, right? Working in other bets. The point is, when you're being offered leverage like this, you shouldn't cash out early. Right? Don't just take a team to win the division. Take them to win the Super Bowl with the expectation that you're going to hedge out later. Let me let you in on another secret. These lines are based on what we know right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. We don't know how Andy Dalton is going to look long term as quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. We don't know how Andy's going to deal with that Dallas Cowboy offensive line being injured, right? Well, you know what? If he deals magnificently, and the Cowboys, as Pro Football Focus tells us, has one of the easiest schedules in the NFL this year, right? If the Cowboys suddenly get on a run and understand their passing game is so proficient that Dak Prescott was on a pace to obliterate the season passing yardage record. Obliterated. Dak Prescott was on a pace to get more than 6,000 passing yards this year. Let's say the Cowboys, who are already in first place in the division, let's say the Cowboys actually show that they deserve to be in first place. Right? Let's say that uh, the rest of the league catches up somewhat to Drew Brees lacking arm strength at this point, right? Let's say that Tom Brady, Drew Brees, they're fighting it out for supremacy in that division. Let's say the other teams have losses. Suddenly the Cowboys actually look like they actually have a chance to go deep in the playoffs, right? Because Lord knows they have the best wide receiving core, or at least one of the best wide receiving cores in football, and Lord knows they have one of the elite running backs in football, well, understand, you're going to be sitting someplace in December, you're going to look at your betting portfolio, and then you're going to realize, my God, I got the Cowboys at 40 to 1 leverage. <laughs> what were the casinos thinking back in mid-October? Right? Understand, when you have leverage like that on one play, that gives you freedom to structure your bets to get some kind of expected value, right? That gives you the leverage to throw some here, throw some here, even on teams you don't believe in, right? Let's say the Cowboys become a juggernaut and they're playing some team you don't believe in, right? At that point, you could say, you know what? Hell, since I'm sitting pretty with the Cowboys at 40 to 1, why don't I throw two bucks on the team they're playing, right? Let's say the Cowboys are favored and you're getting leverage on the two bucks. So if disaster strikes and the other team wins, guess what? You still come out ahead because you only threw one buck on the Cowboys at 40 to one and one buck on the Eagles at 45 to one. 
So think it through. At these prices, I believe the bet makes itself. Right? I wouldn't take anyone to win the NFC East right now. What I would do is take the two teams I think have a chance at 40 to 1 and 45 to 1. Right? The way to make money in gambling, in my opinion, is to use leverage. And the best market to get leverage in are NFL futures. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Good luck betting.